This is Rocky Snyder. At the tone, leave your name and message, and I'll get back to you. I I was born uh, with two uh, left feet, and they had a uh, a nickname uh, for me. They used to call me Loopy uh, because you know I would walk in little loops, uh, kept going in circles. <coughs> Welcome to, back to another episode of the Rockfit Files. Rocky Snyder with me. We're finishing off the Anatomy in Motion series or season, as I should call it. I think 24 episodes, somewhere around there. And what better way to kind of make the finale than to bring Gary Ward and Chris Schroederen right back on the show? You know, we had them one week apart, each kicking off the season. So why not bring them back? So Gary and Chris, welcome back. Thank you very much, Rocky. All right. So it's, it's been one heck of a season, I got to say. We've had so many different colleagues, different professionals on the show talking about the way in which they take the information that they have gotten from the coursework that is anatomy and motion, as well as the flow motion model, which is the way in which the human body moves through three-dimensional space when a moment in time when the heel strikes the ground to the very next moment that heel strikes the ground all things occur in the body. And so taking that into, whether it's Pilates or manual therapy, personal training, a baseball coaching, golf instruction, we had a, a gambit. And uh, so what, first of all, what does that feel like to see all of this manifest? Gary, you first, and I definitely want to hear Chris's response too, but what you've, you've created a monster. How does that feel, Dr. Frankenstein? <laughs> um. Actually, it's re it's really good to hear. Um, I've been aware for a very very long time that it, um, that the discipline itself was interesting to many 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 different fields. Um, but when you when you put it like that in the way that you just did, um, I know I've spoke to to people as well. Uh, baseball baseball pitching, skiing, golf, um, tennis coaches, and all all forms of body work. And uh, I think. I'm just, I'm personally just delighted to have been able to put my brain to something that so many people have found useful and challenging and inspiring and thought provoking and, and, uh, and back to the original word useful in, in their work. And uh, uh, anybody who works with anybody in the human body, with the human body, um, can have access to a map of usefulness <laughs> of of how the body works for whatever sport and whatever discipline so it's a huge carryover and uh, long, long may that continue and i know that um the word is being spread by yourself but also those people in their own industries and communities so it makes me feel really good to answer your question um to know that we're having far-reaching benefits like that chris what about yourself uh in terms of the people that have come through the coursework are there those that surprised you like where did this carpenter come from or this aeronautic expert what is he doing in this course you know anything like that um yeah i i think just generally people's journeys to anything are interesting aren't they and the everyone i think this is true for for all work but particularly our industry is got involved in that part of the industry to solve some form of problem they're having in themselves and so when you recognize that we work in an industry to do with a body and then everyone has a body <laughs> there's no surprise that you're going to get a whole mulch of people coming in whether they're engineers or old accountants or uh, cellular biologists and it's incredible and i think the thing that i am most inspired by is the sometimes you meet these people who have done such wide um, areas of study like they've been here 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 and then somewhere in their head it's all connected and you can't see what that connection is because it's so personal to them but it is somehow uh, and I'm always super inspired by that you know when you get microbiologists entering the classroom who turn into Pilates teachers because they they saw something or needed something and then they got so intrigued by it that they just took their microbiology brain and went a town on studying <laughs> and um 
I, I, I love it. I, I think that's what I love about the, this, this particular classroom is because we're not teaching anything in, we are teaching things in particular, but we're not teaching a method. So, you know, we have this cocktail of professions in any one classroom we will have at least anywhere between six and nine different professions from varying backgrounds. Yeah. yeah. Isn't it awesome. You know, you, you speak of that and, and I don't know if you realize it, but we are now at the one year anniversary since we were together in person at the yeah. court, you know, it was March 16th, 2020 when yeah. all hell broke loose. I, I came back <laughs> to the room after a lunch break and everyone's on their cell phone and, and they're scrambling all around and, and the word came down. Yeah. Everyone's trying to get to the airport to fly home. So since that time, here we are, one year anniversary of the, the Santa Cruz course coming to an end. You guys did some remarkable stuff over the course of the year. And one of the biggest ones is putting out some major coursework so that those that would normally be in person are learning online. Uh, Gary, what was that undertaking like? Um, fortunately, uh, we had actually begun the process of filming our lower leg um, two-day biomechanics course because in November 2019 is that, is that right yeah November 2019 gosh long time yeah. ago um, we flew to Australia and we already had a mindset of changing the course structures from the six-day courses uh, to introduce two-day lower limb courses and two-day upper body courses with a view to giving people a base foundation before they went in to look at the flow motion model which was an, another four-day course um, and so we um, we wanted to, as we always do, one of our highest kind of uh, priorities is support for the students. And so what we wanted to do before we went out and delivered the two day course was to film the two day course so that we could provide them, the students with. Um, so we're flying into Sydney to deliver it. And we, it might be a year before we go back to Sydney. Little did we know that that was the best case scenario at the time. <laughs> <laughs> but we we didn't want to leave them they couldn't go into our online support area because everybody in there has experienced a huge amount of information and they were receiving a, a fraction of it and, and so we wanted to provide them with further support so they could revisit the material uh, again and again and again to their heart's content and then would go back a year later and deliver the upper body um so we were ahead of the game um in in terms of having that ready to go and when um i think when lockdowns first began I think we were able to get it out actually pretty quickly and it's amazing how much goes into the production of a what is it 600 minute course putting an exam together um the the manual the artwork that Rob Sawyer has put together who I know you had on the podcast um the artwork the manual etc cetera, etc cetera, and, and Ulrich with all of the editing and etc so a huge amount of work was thankfully able to we were able to get it out within uh, about three weeks I think of the first of the first lockdown and also coincide that with a release of our wake your feet up program as well so people could be kick their slippers off at home and get to work on their on their ailing feet and legs in the, in the comfort of their own own home so um yeah it was it was a, a blessing in disguise or a good foresight as they might say and how's that been? Just the, the, the interest in these courses, has it been pretty good? I, um, the interest has been good. The interest has been really good. Um, a lot of people have um, indicated good learning and, and a lot of people have struggled with the learning. Um, and we can talk about you know, how we're dealing with that in a, in a bit, but um, the biggest surprise to both of us, Chris and myself, is how just how many people bought it and how few people have managed to actually get on with it. So the number of people who get through the programme, uh, which is another reason for creating support, um, is actually quite small compared to those who... So it's a, it's a proper course. It's not just a 24-hour get through it and, you know, apply on Saturday morning with your next client on Zoom or whatever. There's, there's going to be... There's a lot of learning, a lot of undertaking. It's going to take a year, a year or two, perhaps even to just get the basics of that course. And we've got more courses that we want to offer. So to have people really grounded in the basics and to be able to move on to the next part of the program and onto the next part of the program, because everybody, of course, thanks to 
people like yourself and running podcasts and talking about flow motion models and putting it's in the what the foot book and then people put it on Instagram and they talk about everybody wants the model and they're like well you can't have the model until you learn the basics so it's there it's there for you now um the legs the upper body will be out soon um and those fundamentals that we're we're so keen to impress upon people to learn um because closed chain anatomy is, is and open chain anatomy are quite different so what you what you know about legs might show up differently when you start looking at the moving on the ground um, and feet are still considered the lost the lost or forgotten body part so to bring that in, to life and to bring that to people in far flung, flung places such as uh, we're reaching places like India and Sri Lanka and South America, people who could never have come to our courses. So that's been a huge bonus. And um, but these, as I said, these fundamentals are now starting to look like stepping stones for people to get closer and closer to being able to learn the material that they really want to learn from us. So, Chris, did you find it surprising that all these people were signing up for the chorus and yet a small percentage were, were completing them or were you expecting it to be different? Um, yes and no. I so I you know I love studying. Like I'm a proper online course junkie, <laughs> and inside that I I get how difficult it is to finish a course. One to start a course and two to finish it. Um, so there was a part of me that was expecting it, but I thought that what we were doing was interesting enough to kind of start. Let let's say to start. <laughs> Because there's a high percentage of people that haven't started, let alone started. Finished. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Put it in the top drawer for a rainy day. Was, yeah, and it was it was great actually because it made us do certain things, and one of them is you know there's this kind of FOMO thing, you know, we, which you've seen in the forum. We're trying to encourage not to people not to worry about it. So you know, there's no doubt that a large percentage of sales were people that just impulse buy. They just did. There was a hype around it. They bought it um and from even you know we, we know that there's a small percentage of any any kind of database that's going to turn into something useful and what it made us do was actually it reinforced what we're trying to do which was to deliver really good education so there were two options we could make things a bit easier and encourage more people to finish or we could make it harder for the people that wanted to finish so we went down the route of making it harder for people that wanted to finish. So every step of that course has been laid out actually as a challenge um, from even down to kind of gateways of the exams. You can't pass through a section without completing a gateway in the exam. And I'm glad we did it. The numbers of completions are way lower than we ever wanted. But the people that have completed are really, they, they deserve to get through that. Like at the end of it, you get a CPD certificate and you can you can't just press play and let it run in the background while you cook. You've got to be involved in it. And so we're really pleased when we see people pass. There was a lady that emailed the other day. She wasn't going to take it because she English was a second language. And I, I, I saw her name crop up as completed. And I was so stoked for her. It was amazing when she's really put some effort into this. And it's one of the things that, you know, both of us really value is is effort and a friend of mine years ago and i'll never forget it because he had to tutor his cousin and he said to him i'll i'll, I'll meet you where you are if you put in 10 percent, i'll put in 10 percent. if you put in 15 percent, i'll put in 15 percent. put in 100 percent, i'll put in 100 percent. and so the people that managed to get through that course like it's not difficult it, it's not a, it's not a hard course everything's in there it's not made for people to fail but actually the fact that they've been through it, they've sat through it, they've rewatched it, they've gone through the exam, they've got the cert, and it's just nice, they made an effort. <laughs> um, so yeah, it, it actually it, it solidified our resolve to make, to want to deliver better education, not easier education. Well, it's quality control too. So you know that the individuals that have been through that have actually been through it. And it's not a fly by night kind of certification exam of any sort, yeah. where, like you said, can't take it and just uh, just breeze through it. You actually have to make it work. So if if nothing else, Rocky. the people that are aware of that. Yes. Well, Rocky, one of the things was when we first launched it was the consistent question of how long have I got to complete this thing? 
as if we expected them to do it in 24 hours or you've got till the end of the Friday and then we're taking it offline and you'll, you'll never see it again. So get it learned quick. Um, and the, um, the unbelievable amount of questions that I had when, when that happened. And, and I, doesn't, I can't understand how you could put a course together, give somebody four days to learn it and then take it away from them. Because the beauty of this work is about revisiting. If, if, you, if you're learning this course or you've done the course and you think you've got it, I think you can help here, Rocky. You know that they haven't. There is hours and hours of revisiting and practice with people, of putting it into your own body. Huge amounts of revision needs to, needs to be done. And we've waited, um, it will be a year that people have had for people who signed up back in March, April, before the next course will be available. And, that's, and, and if anybody tried to learn it past their exam and, and then put it in the drawer again and just played with wedges but didn't revisit the material, they'll, they'll actually be off the pace. And, and so a huge part of, of, of this, and, and I would hand it back to you if I may, as I'll become the podcast presenter, but you know how hard it is this work and how much dedication and time you need to put into it. So the idea of actually taking it offline and saying you can't revisit this now, you must have learned it in that short period of time is, is just crazy, right? Oh, it truly is. I mean, for myself personally, I'll go on the educational platform and watch a few videos and then I'll, I'll go weeks, and honestly, without going back to it because I need to filter in that information. And then when I feel like it's been digested, I've turned it inside out and upside down and I, I feel like I know it better, then I need to take another chunk of information and go with it. It's, it's, there's too much that you can't just sit down and expect to learn it in one fell swoop. It's, I continually revisit the educational platform and with one goal of, of completing all the videos in there so that they all say 100% on my dashboard, that's just my <laughs> ego. Just to please Chris. That one, right? But, but then there's others. The reason why I don't have 100% on all the videos is because I've watched other videos more than once. And I keep going back to that one because I, I know I'll get to the other ones in time, but I really need to spend some time truly understanding what the scapula is doing or what, what is the knee doing in these movements. And, and partly because, you know, we say it in the courses too, if you can't feel it in your body, it's going to be really hard to understand how it actually moves. So there's restrictions in my own body that I struggle to understand conceptually. So as soon as I start to work with that, they feed one another. So it's really quite nice. But the other thing that you guys have started this year was a mentoring program. And, and it wasn't laid out necessarily with the series, but as this, the weeks unfolded, it became obvious that it makes sense to introduce all the mentors as it stands now to the viewing audience or listening audience. So uh, tell us a little bit be, behind the reasoning why you wanted to have a mentoring program? Um, I think, as I already mentioned, it's the uh, the idea that support is is high on our agenda, <clears throat> and also that if you the, just the as we were just saying, the, the the courses, the material needs to be revisited again and again and again because it, it's different, um, and it's different in a way um, that. You almost think you know it, but but you don't. You come in with a frame of reference in your, of, of, and a way of thinking from your previous education, which leads you to this idea that you you know your anatomy, and then and then you'll hear the bits that that reason with you or that um, not the word resonate with you, and then ignore the bits that don't, and you start to create this false picture that fits your already existing kind of way of thinking. Um, and so then people start to bump into problems and not in a classroom, they can ask those questions and we can willingly give answers. I think every day and we always put time aside to have big discussions uh, in the classroom with, with 40 people and have the questions answered. And, and those sometimes would be more valuable than some of the teaching stuff, I'm sure, because the people had, were able to do it in context. So for them to be able to, for the students to be able to go into a space with a mentor and be supported and have their questions answered and have their ideas tossed around and uh, have their use of wedge work um, honed and, and corrected and, and guided in a way to learn more and to get the best out of the material that I think that that's really what we wanted to do it just to be able to provide support um, 
and you you are one of our mentors and i was going to say in our last little conversation that we've this is your seventh year of working and studying with us right um and so even after seven years you're still working hard to and have put the time and the effort and the commitment into learning learning the the model and the ways in which we work and the philosophies around finding center etc and um and that is has been enough really to earn you the earn you the right and the regular access you would come every year you traveled to different course locations other than your hometown every year and um and that has that has given you you know a, a much more you've spent so much more time with us than the majority and that's what you'll find about all of our mentors is they they've 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 traveled they've committed they've worked really hard and they've and they've grown really strongly with the content so for the new students who have who are learning from the foot to the pelvis in over 600 minutes of what is essentially new material um these mentors are really really well placed to offer the support that they need on on pretty much any level i would say and chris your thoughts on the mentoring i mean when this concept came about what was what was it because i'm, I'm kind of curious <laughs> <laughs> no, no way it's going to say. Uh, so, this, <laughs> my first thoughts were no, no. <laughs> you don't need it. <laughs> I'm not doing it, no. Um, but the, the, the reason behind it was we, my the reason behind my first thought was the course, the, the course is uh, genuinely self studyable. It, it is. There's nothing yeah. examined. There's nothing in the exam that isn't in the material and the material has been repeated and repeated and there's a brilliant flow through it it's not complex yeah. gary's used really simple language i think we've done a really good job of things that are probably most people wouldn't want to 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 produce because it's too simple and so when the mental thing came out no <laughs> it doesn't need it it's good enough on its own. I'm not doing it. Um, but actually, as time went, that went by and the people that made the effort to pass, you know, the conversation that Gary and I had, and I started to see more kind of where he was coming from, which was actually these people have made a real effort and they probably want to sit down with somebody and push into what they've just learned. And so at the moment, it's only for people that have completed the course and it's to weirdly it's a kind of we'll meet you where you are you put in 100 percent, we'll give you a bit more and the bit more comes in you know people like you seven years of experience there's a few thousand hours under your belt plus 40 years of <laughs> of professional experience and top of that um and it, it's uh i was the word that i'm trying to not say is reward it's not a reward but it, it is it is us meeting them where they are they've put in effort and actually we can give them a bit more because we've got people like you guys around that can help do that. Um, and the mentors all seem to share one thing, I think, which is they all really value the foundations and basics and they're constantly repeating and repeating and repeating and repeating. I was working with a lady today and she's a chiropractor and, and I asked that we're working through something. And I said, when the pelvis posterior tilts, what does the lumbar do? And she kind of went, uh, well, the, the thing tucks under. I mean, what does the lumbar do? And well, the sacrum tucks under. Yep, but what does the lumbar do? And she went, oh, it's been so long. And it's been so long in, since she qualified that she doesn't remember even the word lumbar flexion. And the mentors seem to be the people that have a problem with forgetting that. And so you guys are always drilling down in the basics and, you know, the famous Steve Cotter quote when he was asked, what's the advanced exercises? And he, his reply was knowing, knowing the basics in more detail. Um, so the people that have been selected seem to be the ones that love the basics in more detail. And we don't ever want to produce material or teach anything that's so complex and convoluted that we don't understand it. <laughs> this is what we were joking about the other day. Like, you don't understand it and you're trying to explain it to somebody else that doesn't understand it that's like a recipe for disaster so can we keep this the foundation so strong that no matter how complex it gets you can come back home and that's what all of you guys seem to love 
and so to be able to have people that can't get to a classroom have access to that is just gold from an education perspective so where is this year taking us i mean in regards to anatomy and motion i know there's there's no answer as to what's to come but are you planning uh, uh this is a relatively new conversation for us so um i think I mean, I get, I'm probably getting daily, not, not requests, but just can't wait until you start, start the courses again. Um, and they're coming from all corners of, of, you know, the old locations we used to teach in from in the U S and Canada, Australia, um, <clears throat> and Europe. And, um, I currently don't even know if I can go on holiday in July. <laughs> so it's a pretty tough one to make. Um, and we've also talked about the, uh, the, the, discomfort level of students um, say even if we ran a course here in London there would be a mix at the moment of people who don't want to be near people and people who who are ignorant of those who who don't want to be near people and are just willing to go near everyone um, and I think that would it not necessarily going to create a nice environment for learning in so um, until we know more and are clear on what's allowed not allowed and all that stuff we intend fully to continue to produce online material um, and I, I, I think Chris you agree this is probably the the rest of this year before we so with no real plans to do anything this year while we just watch and observe um, and something important to bring up is that our consideration is that now we are have the online material as um, good solid simple way of an introduction into our work that will lead you forward to future courses is they will probably become a, a prerequisite so that the day that we do get back into a classroom we won't be dealing with people who've never really grasped any level of the concept before but everybody in that room will be at a certain level of understanding of, of recognizing there's a philosophy, a different way of thinking about muscles, a model that we're going to build or that we have built if it gets to that stage, but we're all singing from the same hymn sheet so that we can actually um, do better and deeper work on the on the subject. Well, that's kind of a that's definitely something new that you've been kicking around in terms of having people have prerequisites going before the workshop. What what inspired that? Were you finding that it was slowing the process within the workshop down because of the type of people that were coming in there? Do you mean the old muscle videos that we used to do? Well, yeah, I'm just thinking like the, the four day course or the six day course or any of the courses that you're offering. Um, ultimately, everyone that went in there was going without any prerequisite. So do you did you find that you really wish that that had been the case that they had this body of knowledge prior so that you could go deeper or, you know, what's. Yeah, I would say so. Um, for me, um, as, as, as you know, again, using you as the example, you'd come back year after year and have to listen to the same old, same old, which is great because the first time you sit in that room for six days, I always have pretty much said to everybody, you're probably only going to take 10% home. And that might even be the same on your first run of this video that you watch, which means if you want the other 90%, you need to go and watch it again. And I'm not saying once, twice, three times, you, you could just need to do it. You need to revisit the material. And that's what you enjoyed. You'd come back year after year after year and take that 10% up to 15, up to 20 and a leap up to 40. But there started to be a ceiling and we started to have lots of people like yourself revisiting and sitting in the rooms and, and, and we really wanted to be able to work with you guys and take you to another level, but you can't because there's a layer of, um, of beginners in, in the room. Um, and, and so I had a real desire to start working like that. And that was probably the factor that started us teaching the two day courses back in Sydney in November 19, which led to the online material being ready for, for the pandemic. Uh, I hear what you're saying, though. Teaching the basics over and over, you really want to delve in deeper. But every time you have a workshop, you got to start from scratch. So this is going That's right. To yeah. So the prerequisite material to be able to have people come up to a level, not be a beginner when they get in the room is and, and everybody on the same page 
rather than some people are and other people aren't and then that would give us a nice opportunity to to really get some good learning done that makes sense that totally does well i just wanted this to be kind of like a a quick summation episode just to kind of tighten up the the end of the series and uh, i do have one question put you both on the spot have you watched any of the episodes Gary, did you watch anyone other than the one that you did with me earlier? I didn't even watch that one. <laughs> Chris, what about you? I have. I'm working my way through them. Actually, I've watched oh, Ryan, Bobby. Yeah, um, they're they're lovely. They're they're lovely to listen to, and I, I think because we because our interactions with people are very student teacher orientated. And you never actually get to see the real brilliance of some of these students because we don't, we see them in their struggle. Yeah. And when you listen to them in these interviews and go, God, they're brilliant. Mm -hmm. Look what just came out of them. It, it's it, you see a completely different side of them, which is, it was, it's been really nice, really nice. Yeah. That's great. All right. Final question. And I'm going to pose it to you, Gary, what everybody wants to know, when is that book coming out? <laughs> Cut. <laughs> um, that's a real question. Um, I'm dead keen for it now. Um, and Rob has been very, very busy on artwork for the book, uh, artwork for the online material, um, etc. So we now have an insane amount of artwork. Uh, but Rob and I have been um, I can't number off the top of my head. It must be three years now of of doing artwork, penned, hand drawn, every angle you can think of of every structure of anatomy from the top, the bottom, the inside, the outside, the back, the front. Um, it's ne nothing ever been done like it before. So I was never in a rush. It needed to just be what it's going to be. Um, I started writing it I, in somewhere between four and five years ago. I think now it might be five years in April. Hopefully not six. And people have been asking me that question forever, it feels like. Um, but that is how long it has taken. And um, I genuinely think it will be a, a work of art. And I hope it will have the impact that, um, but essentially just bringing, putting the whole model on paper, publishing it. Um, and, and I think a lot of people will be, will be interested to see it. But it will be challenging to the existing anatomy book and create a new opportunity for, for ways of looking at a new one. So I'm super excited, still no rush, but I am, I am keen to start um, putting some of these images down and, and, and final drafting what we've got so far. Every day is just one day closer. That's really how I'm going to look at it. <laughs> well, <laughs> to what then, Rocky? <laughs> to what? <laughs> oh, you guys, thanks for joining me for, uh, for a little time chatting about the mentoring program, uh, anatomy in motion, flow motion model, your own work and so on. And so when, when things clear up, I know we'll get together and it will be a, a blast. But until then, we'll just have to be okay with our, our Zoom buddies out there. So Chris, thank you. Thank you. Good thank you, you very much, Rocky. Gary, you too, man. All right. You guys thank have a great everybody. day. If you'd like to find out more information about the Flow Motion Model, Anatomy and Motion Courses, or Gary Ward himself, pick up a copy of his book, What the Foot? at findingcenter.co.uk. And while you're at it, pick up a copy of my book, Return to Center, where I take the flow motion model and apply it to strength training and conditioning. You can get a copy of that at rockysnyder.com. Thanks for listening.